So we are back. We are going to continue on with our extracts, information, deep dive, fun stuff that we're talking about, you know, playlist thing. And we have so far covered the differences between an extract and an essential oil, i.e. they have different methods of extraction and uh, different end goals. We've also talked about the different types of extractions and what products you can use them in based on the method that was used. And today we are going to start talking about specific botanical extracts, how to use them in your formulations, and what extracts are right for what concern that you are focusing on. And I will tell you more about that in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. Sudzers, welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for week 29 of year three. And yeah, as I said, continuing on with the botanical extracts deep dive playlist thing. And today we are focusing on specific botanical extracts, i.e., my favorites in formulations, and you know how to use them and why I like them so very much. I figured the best way to do this would be to split them into two separate categories, right? So let's focus one video on the hair and one video on the skin and we can talk about the ex extracts that I really love and how I use them and you know all of the things. So today we are going to focus on skin and we are going to cover two main skin considerations right within this. So technically I'm going to talk about 10 extracts in total and those extracts are going to be what I have found to be the best and most beneficial for two main skin conditions. One being fine lines and elasticity of the skin, so any sort of aging concerns, and two, acne or other, you know, dermatopic, you know, kind of skin sensitivity concerns like eczema and whatnot. Now, obviously, keep in mind that for all of these, you cannot make these claims because we make cosmetics, we don't make medical claims. But that doesn't mean that the products that you're putting into your face oils or your creams or your balms should not have an actual benefit for the skin. Otherwise, what is the point? That is what we are doing today. And the reason why I am doing aging and, you know, skin sensitivity, acne et al. is because, you know, just running a poll and looking at the research and the just looking generally at the biggest things that people tend to look for in a face product for their skin are going to be those two. So... Let's get to the video, which is just right here, and I am going to tell you more about all of the extracts that I love of so very much. We're here, and I still have to point, otherwise I don't know how to continue. Okay, so first up, let's talk about my favorite botanical extracts to use in formulations for the skin, for the face, for aging concerns. Now for the formulations themselves, like what product does it go into? It can be a number of things, right? It can be a lotion, which is primarily water-based. It can be a cream, also primarily water-based, or it can be my favorite way to apply skin products, and it's through a face oil. Face oils are going to be highly concentrated with all the good stuff that you're getting from your actual oils, you know, your moisturizing oils that you put in it, as well as your essential oils, but additionally your extracts. And so that's by far my favorite product to make and to use. And so I'm going to be basically talking about all of this with my face oil formulations in mind. That is not to say that you cannot use these extracts within a water-based formulation like a lotion. So first up on this list, let's talk about rose hip extract. I love rose hip extract because it's high in vitamins like A, C, and E. It's very antioxidant rich. It has a lot of really cool fatty acids within it as well that help out with you know the functionality of the skin, promoting circulation, promoting elasticity, helping out with collagen production, all of the jazz. Rose hip extract is going to be a really good product to incorporate into something for face if the person that you are making your cosmetic formulation for 
has been having issues with fine lines and general signs of aging. Next up on the botanical extract list is ginseng extract. Now, ginseng is also really great for fine lines and aging and helping with collagen production and boosting the skin and its elasticity, but it also helps out because it has an added brightening element to it, and that's because it helps promote circulation to the skin. And so I really love ginseng in these applications as well. Now kind of following in line with that, the next extract that I would love to tell you all about is green tea extract. So it also does have a brightening. It also does have a skin tightening. It also does help out with fine lines and wrinkles. But additionally, green tea is also packed with antioxidants and it has great anti-inflammatory benefits. So if you have anybody who has concerns with aging skin, plus maybe some sensitive skin issues, Green tea is definitely going to be one that you're going to want to include. Now, next up on the skin extract is going to be pomegranate extract. Now, that one's a little bit weird, and I, I understand, but you can source it. It is easy enough to source. We will be doing a whole video on that soon. But pomegranate extract is great for the face and for concerns with like fine lines and wrinkles because it does have all the free radical, you know, protections. It also is antioxidant rich. It does help out with circulation and restoring blood flow to the skin itself. I'm going to touch my face so much today. It helps out with collagen production and it also has the added benefit for me of helping promote overall skin texture, which is a really good thing. So you're thinking about, you know, pore sizes and uneven texture from dry spots and all the jazz. So that would be my number four for sure. And then the last is going to be sea buckthorn oil. And I know that we just talked about this within the Beard Balm Project Soapway, you know, challenge and everybody used buckthorn, right? Because it is really, really great for the hair. It helps out with the softening and the hair growth, absolutely. But it does wonderful things for the skin underneath too. Sea buckthorn is vitamin rich with vitamin C and E, and it also has lots of omega fatty acids. So overall, it becomes a really great extract to include into you know your face serums and oils and whatnot, because it does help out with elasticity. It does help out, help out with cell regeneration, and it does help out with overall softening and nourishing and moisturizing the skin. So for those reasons, I really also love sea buckthorn extract within my cosmetic formulations, especially in consideration of the skin. All five of these extracts are relatively easy to source. There are a lot of different versions on where you can buy them, but these top five for me, reasonably good price points, reasonably easy to source, and definitely going to be a really good addition into your formulations. Now, how I would use these within formulations, it does kind of depend on what the overall product composition is. So if this is going to be a face oil, so you already have all the cool benefits that you're getting from your moisturizing oils, from the oils that you put in, say your hemp seed, your karanja, your neem, etc plus some essential oils, say a tea tree or a lavender. Adding an additional extract is going to give you more benefits for sure, but you don't want to overload and overstimulate the skin. And so I recommend using an extract for a pure, undiluted, just oil composition at 1% to 2%. That'll cover your bases. That will give you more than enough potency within your recipes themselves and ensure that you're not putting too much onto a skin that could potentially stress it out. So those would be my recommendations for an oil-based you know, solution. For a water-based solution, I would I would go up to 5%. Remember, you have the water in there that's going to basically dilute everything else that you have in there. So you can, you know, get a little bit more potent with your extracts. I would say no more than 5%. It's not really needed. And in tests that we've done whenever I'm formulating new products, I don't see enough of a noticeable difference between a 3% and a 5% to really justify going to that 5% but you certainly could in water-based applications. So now that is that for the face concern of aging and fine lines and all of that jazz. Now let's talk about a secondary and the, one of the most common skin concerns, acne and sensitive skin. Now, first up on my list for acne prone or sensitive skin with skin conditions as far as eczema and whatnot are concerned is going to be aloe vera. So it shouldn't really shock anybody, but aloe vera, even though it sounds boring, it's actually very cool to use in products and it's going to be a good thing that people with overly sensitive skin are going to trust because aloe vera is very calming. It's very soothing. It's very hydrating. Definitely helps out really angry skin for a number of reasons. So aloe vera extract definitely one to consider when you are formulating for skin sensitive people or acne prone people. 
Next up on this list would be chamomile extract. And again, kind of a no-brainer. Chamomile is known to be calming and soothing. It also has an added anti-inflammatory property, but it also really does help out with calming the skin, really soothing it, and it has a, a redness component that helps minimize the look of redness overall in the, the appearance of the skin and help scarring. So chamomile is a great one to include or consider including in your skin formulations for your cosmetics as well. Now next up in this is going to be witch hazel. And I know that witch hazel, it's like the most obvious thing in the world, right? But not enough people are putting it into their formulations. I don't know why we're sleeping on this in 2023. It's like we've forgotten about the power of witch hazel. So witch hazel being a natural astringent, it obviously helps out with all manner of, you know, bacteria and goopy, nasty stuff that can be found on the skin for sure, but it also tightens the pores. It helps control the sebum and actually balances the skin's acid mantle and reduces excess oil. So I know it might seem kind of lame to put witch hazel extract in a formulation, but honestly, if you are dealing with someone with sensitive skin or is prone to acne breakouts, witch hazel is going to be an absolute win for them. They're going to appreciate a formulation, including that. And number four on this list would be cucumber extract. And we love cucumber. It brightens, it soothes, it calms, it refreshes the skin. It has a protective element to it. So it helps stave off a lot of the free radicals that are going on in the environment that could lead to, you know, stressors and acne and all of the jazz. So cucumber, obviously we know and love cucumber. And I, again, I know it might seem basic, but when you're dealing with sensitive skin, sometimes basic is good. And my fifth and final recommendation for skin formulations for acne prone skin, sensitive skin would be licorice root extract. Now licorice root extract is really very cool because it kind of covers all of the bases from helping out with flare-ups, with skin sensitivity flare-ups, as well as reducing potential scarring and hyperpigmentation that can come from an acne flare-up. Got a lot of anti-inflammatory benefits. It has a lot of nourishing properties. It has a lot of calming and soothing. And again, just based on that hyperpigmentation concern so many of us deal with, it's definitely a win for me when you are looking at something to control sensitive skin and breakouts and help them not happen as frequently but also kind of repair the damage that was left behind. Now, these extracts, again, I am thinking about within a face oil formulation, so highly potent. So within a face oil blend for acne prone skin, I would definitely consider for my moisturizing and nourishing oils, a hemp seed, a karanja or a neem. Primarily a lot of lightweight oils that are not going to weigh down the skin and clog any pores. And then also include an essential oil like a tea tree to really help out with the astringent qualities and helping repair and heal active breakouts. So how much do we use? Well, for these formulations, it's gonna be basically the same. I would say no more than 2% for your oil-based products and no more than 5% for the first four extracts that I mentioned, but go ahead and keep that licorice extract at 2%. The reason why is because licorice extract, while it is really great for sensitive skin, if you use it in too potent of a dose and you're not paying attention to the potency of the extract that you are purchasing, you do run the risk of it doing the opposite and exacerbating a different skin concern. So I would keep licorice root at 2% and it will do all of the beautiful things for the skin, for sure. And these five extracts are also very easy to source. The price point is decent and they're going to provide really good benefits for the end user, which is ultimately the goal. We do not want to throw stuff into our mix that is not needed. We do not want to throw stuff into our formulations that will not be helpful even though we cannot make medical claims and say that it treats acne. That's going to make a happy end customer and somebody that's going to come back and continue buying you know, your products. And so I would recommend starting there and sort of blocking out the more expensive or kind of niche extracts, although they do exist and we can talk about those and where I use them in my formulations and whether or not I think you should, you know? at a different time if you would like. But yeah, that's kind of it for the skin stuff. So we will be doing another video right after this talking about the best extracts for hair. Because while most extracts are going to do double duty and they will be good for hair and skin alike, there are going to be extracts that are going to be better suited for hair than necessarily skin or really just rock stars within the hair world to condition, to help seal out damage, all of the jazz. So that's what we're going to talk about next. Hey Sudzers, you guys are awesome. Thank you for existing. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being my people. As always, I appreciate you guys more than I can ever fully put into words. So thank you. 
For everybody else that's here and watching, hi, hello, you exist too. That's cool. I am out of here, but I will be right back. Maybe not today. I don't know. But I will see you all again very, very soon. Maybe today. Definitely tomorrow. For another round of Botanical Extract Cosmetic Formulation. Soapy fun. Bye. Yeah, I can be normal. Normal is boring AF. My God. Imagine wanting somebody to be normal. Ugh.